Hello and thank you for joining. My name is Anthony Mancuso from Sonoma Partners and today we wanted to provide you with this short video to talk a little bit about one of our favorite solutions within Dynamics 365 being Microsoft CRM portals. Now you may have seen or heard of these portals before. Uh, we're going to go through a quick demonstration before but wanted to start out just with a quick slide to talk a little bit about what a portal provides you as an organization. Now at the very core level these portals uh, just have the assumption that it's pulling data from CRM and, and making it accessible so that your end customers can enter data on that portal, push that back into CRM, and bidirectionally as well, your customer service representatives, for instance, can enter information on CRM and push that out into a portal. Now, this portal solution comes with a, a couple different templates that are already pre-built out. You can see things that they're built for self-service. So offering case deflection, management of cases for your end customers to track uh, the progress of their cases and even open up new ones. You see community portals allowing your end customers or users to go in and have this place to collaborate and network together. You have a partner portal. Let's say you have a selling organization and you have uh, people outside of your firm who want to be able to interact with your CRM data, but they're not necessarily CRM licensed users. And then at the end, you see we have new portals, so showing things like project service automation, field service, and events. At the very bottom, you can look through this list, uh, just a quick idea of what all portals include. So that includes things like ads, branding, uh, we mentioned some of the case deflection and management, charts and graphs, links, polls, and then even some customization uh, capabilities around design, setting up what your portal looks like, who has access to what information. So at this point, we want to jump straight into a demonstration. And what we're going to show you is that customer self-service portal. So now we're going to take the opportunity to look at a sample portal. I've got this portal lightly configured and customized for a company you can see here called the Great Technology Company. And as you can imagine by the name, what we do is sell technology. And we're going to go through a use case today that'll take us through a customer of ours going into our portal and requesting support. Just a quick navigation, what you can see here is at our top uh, toolbar, we have things like access to our knowledge base that sits back in Dynamics, forums for our customers to communicate with each other. And then we have an area for my support, the ability to search, and actually sign in as an authenticated user to our portal. Everything you're looking at here is uh, done via point and click configuration, so I didn't do any coding or customizations to this, where we're surfacing things like our most popular knowledge base articles see it a little bit further down here. Access to the forums and different ways to get help, like the ability to browse the knowledge base, create a brand new case, or contact us directly. Now we have our customer named Vince, and he's coming into the portal today. We've already got him authenticated as a user. So we're going to hit this sign in button in the top right hand corner. We're going to sign in with Vince's credentials. While I'm on the screen, it's worth noting too that you can see that a customer now can come in and register for an account to our portal. They can redeem an invitation that we've sent out to them. And then by using things like forgot your password down here, Azure AD that you can see on the side, they could actually be responsible for the maintenance of their own account authentication and their username and password. So it takes that level of effort off of our customer service representatives. So I'm gonna get signed in as Vince now. And the first screen that pops up is our profile, where again, as I mentioned, Vince being able to manage as an end customer of ours, his own information, can change things like his name, email, business phone, organization, public profile, and even contact preferences, as you can see below. Best part about this is that any information that Vince updates through here automatically gets written back to his contact record that sits within Dynamics. Now, Vince came to our portal today because he recently bought a 3D printer from us, and the delivery has never arrived. So that's a big issue and he wants to get that resolved. I'm gonna start in our top navigation here. Maybe first thing as a point of deflection that Vince might wanna see are these forums. So let's go in and see if other great technology company customers have had the same issue and how they've gotten that resolved. But then he's gonna go over to this My Support tab. And in here, what this will do is actually bring up all the open cases that Vince current, currently has, maybe on behalf of his company. So you see that we've got parent cases, required service, product questions. At the very top, there's an option that says, what can we help you with? So before we're even prompting Vince to open up a new case, we want to offer, as we mentioned, that point of deflection. So he can go in now and type something like delivery issue. And what will happen is 
This is going to look at our repository of knowledge base articles back in Dynamics, pick up those keywords, and then bring up the most relevant article for Vince to try to resolve that issue without having to put the extra effort on our customer service representatives. As you can see, the first article here is Delivery Never Arrived. Vince can click that now, and you see that there's a procedure. It's actually asking him to open up a case. Okay. Now, for the sake of time, I've already opened up that case. I'm going to go back to our My Support window, and you'll notice here that we have that case created for a shipment uh, question regarding an order that we've had. If I click on that now, this is going to show all the information that Vince just entered on a quick form when he originally opened up this case. So things like the subject, the case type, the description. I was supposed to receive this product over a week ago, and I never even got a shipping notification. What should I do? As I scroll down a little bit further, you can see that Vince has some options. He could actually communicate with our customer service representatives through here by adding a comment, which would just show up as an activity back on the case record in Dynamics. You can see that I've already done that here. Vince said, I still haven't received a shipping notification. And then shortly after that, one of our customer service reps responded to him, again, just sitting within that case within Dynamics to say something like, I'll make sure to verify the shipment as soon as possible. Sorry for the delay. Now from here too, it's also worth noting, let's say Vince uh, maybe browses the forums, goes through the knowledge base a little bit and actually finds his answer. He can go in right now and actually close that case himself so that it would close on our end as an organization so we don't have to manage that any further in Dynamics. Okay. Next thing that we'll demo and show real quickly here is I'm going to sign out of Vince. And as I mentioned earlier in the demonstration that all of this was done just through point and click configuration. One of the best parts about the portals built in with Dynamics is that we have the ability just by logging in as a web role for an administrator. And that's something that uh, you determine who has that access to, to be able to make these configurations. I've logged in as a system administrator and it looks very similar to uh, what Vince was viewing when he was logged in and authenticated. But now you'll notice that as I hover over any one of these areas, I could actually change some of this. So here we have the great technology company. Let's say we've gone through a, a rebranding as a company and we just want to update our company name. If I hover over where it says great technology company here, you see that it's asking me if I want to change or edit the home slash title. I'll hit edit. Here you have your editor window that pops up with the rebranding. We've gotten much better as a company. We're going to go from the great technology company to the amazing technology company. All I have to do now is hit this save button. And you'll notice those changes reflect on our portal in just a moment here. There we go. So you can see now you've seen uh, what the portal might look like for somebody that wasn't authenticated yet, uh, what it looks like for an authenticated user, how they've gone in and opened up a brand new case, surfaced, th surfaced things like knowledge base articles, and a little bit of the administrator capabilities as well. So now that we've taken an opportunity to understand a little bit about portals, the different templates that are provided out of box with these portals, and even looked at an example of what one might potentially look like and feel like, uh, we'll round this all out with just looking at those individual templates again with a little bit more details. So just starting on self-service, similar to what we just saw in our demonstration, the ability for your end customers to get to support, to be able to have discussion forums, manage and track entitlements and SLAs, and create feedback around polls and insights and things like that. Moving forward a little bit further, we have employee self-service as well. So let's say that you want to give your employees a location that they can go to that's outside of CRM. It's branded out for the company, but can tackle a lot of the same issues, providing them with knowledge base articles for internal processes, providing a forums for your employees, making sure they're authenticated and even giving them a place to provide feedback as well. The community portal, as it says here on the slide, encourage customers to help themselves and each other. So we saw a little bit about this in the demonstration with forums. So having the discussion forums, keeping track of blogs, feedback, and new ideas that we might want to collect from our customers. And the final one here is the partner portal. So managing things like lead distribution, which leads are we giving to our outside contractors that we're working with, deal registration and bidding, managing accounts and managing opportunities outside on a third party level. A couple last things that we want to mention here. From a security perspective, we talked about this well during the demonstration. 
is that the authentication can be managed by that end user and authenticated in a lot of different ways, as you can see on the left hand side. And then all of that is being managed and maintained back in CRM on an account and contact level. You have a lot of abilities to do custom branding. So as you can see on the right hand side, this Top Dog Adventures, this is pretty customized branding that they have over here. Um, which again, still is just surfacing that CRM data, but doing it in a nicer and prettier way. Profile management, as we mentioned, the authentication maintenance of that, actually having uh, the ability to do that on the dynamic CRM side. You can see on the right picture here that we're looking at a contact record for a specific form that was created for portals, this profile web form. Um, we talked about the information that somebody logging into the portal, if they update their job title or their email address, all that writing back to CRM, you can see that that's how that's being done right here as we can see in the pictures. The next is the editable content. We saw this as well, logging in as an administrator and in line with that portal, being able to update anything that we're seeing. And then the final thing that we'll talk about here is the ability to even build custom applications. So some of the examples that you're seeing on the screen are uh, access to mapping functionalities. You're seeing things like the ability for your customers or let's say your employees to take a list of things and download that out to an Excel spreadsheet. And on the left hand side, the ability to even build things like an e-commerce store all with that big picture in mind that everything that's being done here on the portal is either coming from CRM or writing back to CRM so that your end users and your employees all have the most uh, living, breathing, up-to-date information that's being captured from our customers. If you have any more questions, feel free to let us know. Thanks.